Well, everybody, great to have you back with us. Uh, our start, of course, the Allied Steel Road uh, on a mission charity mile race day. Superb afternoon, a million rand pick six carryover as well. Six million rand pool or thereabouts. Lots of charities involved that we're going to uh, be associated with, and they are going to be the winners at the end of the day. Yes, it's a little bit cold at Turfentine, and the wind's blowing about, but from a horse perspective, they'll absolutely love it. And the condition on back on the outside track, which is looking so well, a pen of around 23, 24, they're going to come around a six or seven metre false rail. It's all set to go today, and um, Daryl Marie's with me. Unfortunately, Darren Burris can't, but um, Daryl, interesting opener. I see Munchkin the first time, a two to one favourite. Uh, for Lucky Hudalakis, first time. And Black Egret, I see they're backing number six now from seven to two into five to two. Yeah, Clyde, uh, very surprising to see Munchkin priced up favourite. Uh, but then, then again, he was due to run in the past and they've always su supported him in the anti-post market. Yeah. Anti market. So he comes to the track with a reputation. But on form, Black Egret, I mean, haven't, hasn't that form really stood up? Uh, Mythical Dreams remained unbeaten since then. I don't believe we saw the best of him on debut. It was on the inside track over a thousand meters. Uh, now that he switches to the stay inside track, 1160. I think with that run under his belt, he'll take a power beating. Much could, could be anything, uh, but I'm going to say back Egret, Black Egret will start favorites. Uh, okay. And uh, I respect Munchkin. Um, let's see how he goes today. And also one for trifectas and quartets, Marquez. He's a full brother to William Robertson. Does get fitted with the blinkers on debut. Uh, let's see how he moves down to the start and if there's any race time support for him. But of the race runners, I'm very bullish on Black Egret's chances. Black Egret. Okay. Marquez is interesting, a first timer. Arun Chada, of course, our sponsor today, and Warren Ripon, they're the owners of this horse, and uh, is trading at around five to one or thereabouts. Okay, well, that's the first race selection. Darren Burrows, I know he's got an all to come recommendation, which we'll go and have a look at uh, right now. Yes, first race. Talk about the second race now. This is a maiden class field that lines up there at the 1160 meter mark. And Gregarious Gal for the Azzy Yard is trading at nine to two. But market's suggesting an open race, like the five Princess Solaria, for example, is five to one, and ten efficient traders trading at around five to one as well. And then it's seven to one about number four, Splendid Season. So it does tend to be an open market. There's a horse in your southern skies. I see that's coming to nine to two at the moment, the 12. So watch that. That's a unraced horse, as I understand it, Daryl. Uh, southern skies, a version Getrix, Gavin Lorena. Jan Janssen van Vieren, the whole Werner's connection team set up. So there's money for that, which is interesting. Yes, uh, her dam stayed. I think she went uh, 2,000 meters, Clyde. She's related to Smoking Hot, who's a two-mile horse. Yes, that's uh, right. So uh, if she's not um, going to find this on the sharp side, um, you have to respect the money. Uh, the other, another first-timer you could possibly look at is number 14, Virgin River. Now, her dam won over 1,000 meters. Uh, she's well related, uh, assisted to Snow Reports. If there's any support for her, I'd certainly take note of that. 14 to 1 at the moment. Um, of the race runners, I'm leaning towards number 3, Gregarious Gull, and number 4, Splendid Season. Now, Gregarious Gull, she's bred along sprinting lines. Um, they tried over extra last time out. She just pulled terribly, and um, I thought uh, she did extremely well to finish as close as what she did because she was overdoing it. Um, in the early stages. Right. I think coming back in trip is certainly going to favour and it looks like she's got enough early toe to overcome that inside draw if she wants to angle towards the middle of the track. Correct. Uh, splendid season on the other hand is drawn towards the outside. We have had a little bit of rain during the week. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Pins around 23, 24. Yes. Right? Yeah. And uh, in her last start, another one that was pulling terribly. I don't believe that form line is going to hold up uh, barring the winner on that occasion. But she's got the racing fitness on her side. And I think um, she's one of the leading lights over here. So three and four. Three and four. Okay, they're drawn on the opposite side of the track. First time back on the stand side track, which is looking magnificent, by the way. This is what the guys are suggesting. Here's a look at the slide uh, that's going to go up for you now. And you can make a note on what you want to do in race number two on the card, as we made reference to four and five uh, uh, from Daryl's perspective. Three and four, I beg your pardon. Uh, his first two choices, but there on the slide at the moment, you can make a note of the information for race number two.
Well, it's a small field, but it's one of the most cracking races today, let me tell you. I'm very excited to uh, watch this race today. Rain in Holland and under your spell, Bon Vivant. The market-wise, I've got 18 to 10 about Rain in Holland, number two on the card. Four Bon Vivants, 22 to 10, and one under your spell is 7 to 2. And then it's 10 to 1 and better about the others in the race. But, um, of course, uh, Sean Terry ultimately does hold the key here, and it's going to be interesting to see. Personally, I'd like to see under your spell come back, you know, to uh, fire up and start winning. I uh, like her because I think she's got a lot of ability. Oh, she, she certainly does, Clyde. I mean, she's got that second in the Grade 1 Empress Club to Princess Keller over a mile on the standside track. Yeah. She's best weighted of year, but I'm going a bit against the grain of year. Okay. I'm going for number four, Bon Vivant. Uh, All right. They've removed the blinkers. Yeah. They've put her back over the seven furlongs. Last time out, I thought she was a touch unlucky. Uh, with that weight, I would have liked to see her get on with it in the early stages. And if that may have resulted in a, in a different result, in my opinion, if, yeah. she did opt, if they did opt to use those tactics. I mean, she's not badly in at the weights of a year. Yeah, yeah. She's only three pounds off the best weighted. Right. And plus, she's got the race mix fitness on her side. So she's right. my clear topic. Um, and a little bit of a, an outsider to include in the exactors and trifectas, Cloudy, is follow me. Okay. Uh, Gee, you're looking to roll yeah. the big guys over here. I am. I am. Goodness and me. What, are we going to get a bipod result here? <laughs> or what? I might not uh, be very popular after this leg, but I'm going four and five in the, in the third race. Okay. Now, follow me. If you go back a few runs, she actually beat a, a filly like a Marigold Hotel. She beat her by a length and a half, and she's four and a half kilograms better off at the weights. Right, right. And on the weights between Marigold and Hotel and uh, under your spell, there's not much separating them on the Empress Club run. Right. So, follow me. Don't be surprised to see her run into the money. She sure. may lack the, the class. You've blown me away, Butty. But, uh, You've blown me away. But she's going to be my second pick behind Bon Vivant. Okay, well, there you go. There you got it. It's very, very interesting the way Daryl has put this together. So we're going to work out what the, the situation is uh, with regards uh, to this third race. Here's the info that's going to go up on the slide as to what we recommend you do. Race number three. It's over 1,400 metres. Of course, it's a pinnacle stakes race. And it's going to be a super one of the best races run today. Lovely to have you back with us. Welcome to 40 to end race number four on the card is the Herserine Highness Princess Charlene Stakes, who, by the way, is donating 50,000 rand to two different charities as well. Very kind of her. Today, there's a 1 million rand pick six carryover. That pool's expected to get about 6 million rand today. Just on the audio quality because of the wind, we do apologize. It's one of those things. It's amazing on how big days how the weather comes after us, but it does. Um, I know Darren Burrows is very big on Feather Boa. He said to me he likes it very much. It's trading at 19 to 10. Three captain peg is four to one, and they bet 10 to one bar the two. And um, I would ask you, in terms of risk, can we go all in Feather Boa? I've just backed up with one horse, Clyde, and that's number 10, top set. Now on paper, she's obviously held by Feather Boa, but that was a she was only having her second start on the inside track. Um, she did have excuses on that occasion. She got caught a little bit cramped on that inside running rail. Uh, on the weight, she's got no chance because she's two and a half kilograms worse off. But she was very likely raced at that stage of her career. Then we saw last time out, she was off the bit on a long way from home. She's going to love the long run in of the standside track and uh, the step up in trip. So if Feather Bower does fluff her lines, I think Typeset uh, could pick up the pieces over here. But Feather Bower, you can't fault her, Clyde. Barring her debut run, which, where she was slightly disappointing, yeah. she's built on each and every effort since then. And, uh, you know, R R Randall Simons got off her when he ran second, and he said, her turn of foot caught me by surprise. So last time out, we saw a much more patient ride from him. She won with a ton in hand. And uh, the way she's going about things, she's certainly going to take some beating. You know, Pierce Trader's not riding today, eh? Yes, so Chase, Chase Mojon, Mojon yeah, takes Chase the ride on the type set. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so, so two and ten in the opening leg of the pick six right, for me. Conservatively, otherwise it's all about Feather Boa at the end of the day here. Yeah? We have got information for you, which our producer is going to, of course, share with you, our director. You'll have a look at what that information is. Just to remember, it's pick six carryover times. We've got two. There's a Daryl Marie pick six and there's a Darren Burroughs pick six. So you guys can take that information down now. Make sure you don't miss because the first leg of the pick six does run at five past one. Don't be late.
on to the Allied Steel Road Graham Beck Stakes. Uh, this is a 1400 meter for the three-year-old boys. It's always been a great race to watch and uh, been around for a long time. Interesting in this particular event, we've got Thunderstruck, who's top of the boards at nine to two. Number one on the card. Number three, Royal Victory, is trading at 11 to two this morning. Number two, Profit, is at seven to one. And then you've got eight to one horses, uh, 12 Shoemaker, eight to one, and 10 Anfields Rocket. I know Grant Maroon rates very highly at nine to one. 10 to one, Laguna Verde. We've been following that horse for long enough at 10 to one. And um, yeah, I think that's pretty much how the market goes in this particular race. Anfield, Clyde. Yeah, Anfield Rocket. So Anfield Rocket is nine. <laughs> now, when I spoke to Grant Maroon about it, he said to me, because he used to train Golden, remember Golden Man and all those top, well, he's uh, with their brothers and um, Guy and uh, Dean, all those guys. And he says this is this is one of the best they've ever had. And oh, well, we're going to see how he goes today, Clark. Personally, I think he's this is his his test. Um, yeah, see how good he is. He, he could be well above average, but I've played to beat him today. Um, Clark, I like the look of number four over here, Unzen. Now. We saw how he flew on debut. Yeah. It was a very eye-catching uh, finish on that occasion. Then a week later, he got it put into that very, very competitive sales cup race. Yes. And uh, he pulled it off. Yes. Uh, now he's on the standside track. I know he's got a wide draw to contend with, but he's not going to be bustled up. He's, like, he's the type of horse that likes to be given a chance and come with a late rattle. He could really be anything. Um, so I'm really keen to see how he goes today. And then I have to go back to my one of my favorites, Laguna Verde. Mm. Now, I was impressed with his comeback run, his first run as a gelding. He moved up and he just... Um, and he got a bit, a bit squeezed. Of, yeah, he yeah. found a bit of trouble, I but um, he wasn't punished thereafter. And I think now that he's on the standside track, Clyde, we're going to see a different horse. Yeah. Um, I believe he's going to reverse the form with a Royal Victory and Profit mm. on the Golden Horseshoe run. Um, he's got a neat draw. He's had that one run under his belt, so he's got... He's got the, the fitness edge yeah. um, over raw, uh, raw victory. Now, Thunderstruck, how's he going to go from that draw? Um, he does have that early, early toe to get over, but it depends on how much energy he's going to exert yeah. uh, to get there. Um, I've got my doubts. I mean, he's, he, he's got a lot on his plate from that draw, Clyde. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it's between the four and the six of you, but the race certainly doesn't you, stop there. Just very quickly before you wrap up, do you give any chance to the Mike Cock horses? Because I can't believe Union Square is 33 to 1. Yes, and, and I think even Bull Shoemaker, I mean, that old Shoemaker's even got to have a chance as well. I mean, I think he's also very good. But I think Union Square, I think 33 to 1 is yeah. a big price. How are they going to play it from their draw, Clyde? I, I don't know. If they're good enough, they win. I'm not too worried about it, to be honest. <laughs> I don't but know. I don't, I'm not sure if we need to. One's got to be very wary. I don't think you can leave the Tukok, are, the Tukok horses out here in this race. I really don't think you can. Well, I have. So. have you? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, I, well, don't yeah. to, I don't know. I don't no, know. What like, do you want me you've got to, to draw come the line and say? No, you've got to draw the line somewhere. chances and go against my perms. No, that I've no, 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 of course not. But I just, uh, I think the guy's in great form right now. So just watch out. Okay, well, let's put that up. Uh, you've heard the opinion from Daryl. And uh, here's some information with regards to race number five, which is the opening leg of today's second jackpot. Get on to the Golden Loom, one of the best sprinters South Africa's ever seen. This is over 1,000 metres. Here we've got Far Away Winter. Interestingly enough, uh, as Golden Loom was, trained by the Azzy Stable and uh, Far Away Winters at 17 to 10. Number 11, Constable, is 6 to 1. And now I got you, number 9, is at 7 to 1. One Sheila's in the play as well at 8. And three, Vasim is 8 to 1. Far away winter, the market's indicating a one-horse race. How are you seeing? How are you reading it? Yeah, Clyde, hasn't he really been impressive? I mean, early parts of his first two runs, he looked like a tearaway type. But in his latest two starts, he's been given a chance and he's really finished his races off well. So I'm hoping from a one draw he can get some cover, perhaps angle towards the middle outside of the track and uh, do his best work late. Mm. Um, on paper, a horse like Constable's got to have a huge chance over here. I mean, he's five kilograms a bit off for a three-quarter length beating. Yeah. Um, so how do you discount his chances? Strictly on paper. But, yeah. I mean, far away, Winters a really up-and-coming, improving sort. Uh, whereas Constable's... Had his a few ratings chances. come down recently, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
uh, the seam interests me. You know, he's a bit of a thousand meter specialist. Mm. Um, I think he's got a chance of reversing that form with Sheila, although at the weights he's got his work cut out. Yeah. But I think thousand meter stand side track, we do get a chance to see him at his best. So in order, I'm gonna tip in 10 from three. But like I say, uh, Constable's a play at the weights. Sheila, on her day, she's very good. Um, is this perhaps two players? Go far away, went to one player, and perhaps is another player, or is it? Uh... I think there's a few races that you could say that. I mean, with okay. Feather Boa, uh, at the end of the day, you'll end up taking 16 perms, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. you've got a chance of missing one. But of far them. away, went is your first choice, right? Definitely, okay. ahead of the likes of Asim and Constable. All right, well, there it is. You've got that information for you. Race number six on the card. It's going to be an interesting race. Let's just see how good our far away winter is, who runs uh, in the Golden Loop. Race number seven is the main race today. It's the Allied Steel Road on a mission mile, charity mile, of course. It's over 1,600 metres naturally. And uh, in as far as the betting is concerned, number three, Safe Passage, is a two to one favourite. Number 11, After the Rain, is the second choice at four to one. And uh, number eight, Pyromaniac, is eight to one. It's 12 to one and better the others. There's some interesting runners in the race. Michael de Klock holds a very strong hand. Um, in this particular event, no doubt, and uh, so does Johan Janssen van Vieren, for example. They've got a lot of horses that with chances. How do you see it? Is it an open race, or are we going heads, heads down with Safe Passage, whom I see from a course and distance perspective? Uh, Daryl's had two runs and two wins, so unbeaten this course and distance, Safe Passage. Yeah, I mean, Clyde, he really is top class, isn't he? Um, but he's not going to be 100% tuned to win the charity mile. If his class pulls him through, so be it. Yeah. But uh, we know that it's not his aim. Uh, now, two horses that have been prepped for this run perfectly is Pyromaniac and uh, Bingwa. Uh, Pyromaniac, if you go back to the Guineas run, I think he's six kilograms per all for a length and a half. Um, I'm not too concerned about his draw because I, li I like the fact that last time he got given a chance and he finished his race off extremely well. Even in the Guineas, he came from behind on that occasion. Mm. So he's going to be given a chance. He's got racing fitness on his side, and I think he has improved as a gelding. So he's going to be my top pick, ahead of the likes of Bingwa and Safe Passage. Now, Bingwa has also been prepped to, to the minute for this race. He's got the one draw. Uh, he's done it in the past. Safe Passage, I mean, you can't fault him, other than he's uh, having a prep run. Um, Red Saxon, returning as a gelding. Um, he's beaten Safe Passage in the past. Uh, and that's interesting, coming back as a gelding Red Saxon. Yeah. That he come um, first run back. Uh, maybe was that the, was that the issue perhaps of late? You wonder. You know what know, was uh, the because, what was because the story when he's been then? good, he's been very good. Yeah, right? absolutely. And, uh, no, he can, so he, he can run, no doubt. That's also his top class. And first run as a gelding, we could see a different uh, story here today. We certainly could. And another one that's top class in his days, MK's Pride, champion minor. Champion Milo. How do, you, how do you rule out his chances over here? Yeah, I yeah. Mean, so, so what, sum it up, Daryl. Tell me what we're doing. I, I, think, as, I think it's an open event. Uh, Pyromaniac, Pyromaniac and uh, Bingwa for me, ahead of Safe Passage. We've got that I, tipsters challenge, eh? You need to yeah. make, because Waiter to wins up against a whole lot of different <coughs> tipsters out there. You know, and you need to put your best you foot forward. You have to mention Darren Burroughs' choice over here. Yeah, what's he after doing? After the rain. Didn't after he the rain. Yes, he did. He said he likes it very much. It's second favourite, but he says after the rain, is, this horse is a massive runner, he believes. So, yeah, he likes that very much uh, for the Fenzel, uh, Gareth Fenzel stable. All right, well, we've got the selections worked out for your race seven. Remember that this is second jackpot, uh, third jackpot, huh? Seven, eight, nine, third ten. jackpot. Third jackpot. Correct. If you want to get a third jackpot, don't do it now because, uh, well, just to let you know, that's what you can do. And here's our selections for race number seven.
You're back with us. Fantastic. Welcome back uh, to the Allied Steel Road uh, on a mission charity mile race day. Race number eight on the card is a super race, one that we can look forward to too. And in this particular event, we've got Pink Tourmaline, who's favorite, trading at two to one. Number seven, Gilded Butterflies, four to one. And number two, Bold Fortunes at nine to two. Now, of course, the second and third favorites are from the Stuart Pettigrew stable. They've been in good form. But I've got to tell you, Brett Crawford's stable on the high felt with, with James aboard here with Pink Tourmaline. I think that stable is absolutely deadly right now. Yeah, and their horses look fantastic. Yeah. Um, Let's all win. Yeah, Clyde, Let's all win today. You think so? Let's all win today. Yeah. Um, I'm telling you, this will win today. Easy game, eh? Not so easy, but I'm telling you this will win. On paper, I mean, uh, there's not going to be much separating herself and Bold Fortune. Now, Bold Fortune's been prepped for this race, Clyde. She's won it in the past. Yeah. Uh, she's having a peak run. Kilogram bit off for a let, uh, two and a quarter length beating. Yeah. But uh, she's, a, she's a different proposition on the standside track. Um, she likes to be given a chance and build up. And this is her course and distance. So I'm going to go against you over here. I'm, I'm going to say Bolt Fulton will reverse that form with Pink Tor Tourmaline, Clyde. Okay. But you know this, I know she doesn't have the same class, but the Philly Gilded Butterfly was super impressive in her later slot. You can see she, she appreciates the step up in trip. Yep. I know she's three pounds under sufferance over here. But she has won on a, on a soft track in the past with 52 kilograms to shoulder. I think if she can switch it on like she did on the inside track last night, um, she could get first run on a Philly like Bold Fortune and uh, hold her off. I'm, I'm going to say Stuart Pettigrew will dominate the finish okay. ahead of the likes of Pink Tourmaline. But you know, Pink Tourmaline, her first run back. She was never in doubt on that occasion. I mean, she, no, she it was, was super, super, super impressive. Super impressive. Um, but, but I don't think it's as clear cut. I don't, I don't believe she's a two to one favorite. No, we absolutely respect your view. That's fine uh, about that. So watch out for the Pettigrew runners. Bold Fortune uh, is Daryl's uh, first choice. There's a bit of a shrewd in here. I watched this horse Greek miss with Waishong Maui last time. I was watching at the back with him. And I just think, watch her today. I don't know if she can win it, but um, uh, she's an exacter horse or a trifecta horse. And just don't leave her out. She's a bit of a spook in the pack, number 10. She's at any price. She's 20 to 1. You know, so I'll, just, we will be watching, so I'll be watching her, but I'm not including her, Clyde. So, yes, I'll no, be I'm, watching I'm her. I'm talking with exacters and trifecta. Okay. So I think oh. just, and I know that uh, Mr. Dima Kotiatis is coming to the races today to watch her. He hasn't been here. I don't think he's been here for five years, but he's coming. So now that there's the omen. All right, there's what we like in uh, the, eighth, uh, the eighth race in the Yellowwood, the other selections. All right, hopefully you'll be running in the pick six at this stage of the game. Race number nine on the card is uh, the Java Stakes over 2,400 metres, where Blackthorn is favourite, number three, at 33 to 10. Four, Light of the Moon is four to one, and eight, Raise a, raise a Hallelujah, four to one. Five, Jamila's at 17 to two, and like the likes of Shango, 10 to one, and even number six, Marching On Together, 10 to one. Is this for Blackthorn's taking, or is there a few no. others? No. no. Okay. It's Light of the moon knows <laughs> yours. So I mean, Even on ratings, he's got uh, his five pounds out with yeah. the best weighted. So, what price is he? Who, Blackthorn? Yeah. 33 to 10 at the moment. Okay. Okay. Uh, the right no, this is a wide like... open event, Clyde. I mean, this Philly, Light of the moon, every time. I know I found her at Big Odds in the but past. You found her long ago, 33 to 1 when she her, won. If I just stuck with her. Yeah. Uh, I'd be a wealthy man, but yeah. uh, I've played to beat her on several occasions since then, and she just keeps proving me wrong. Yeah, yeah. Um, she is obviously best weighted, and uh, she caught the trainer by surprise in her comeback start. Uh, he really was in um, the opinion that you'd need that run, and uh, she still won, so she's going to strip a lot fitter. She loves the stand side track. How do you ignore her chances? Imperial Ruby on his day, he could certainly feature. I know he's putting Go to the two front. slightly below par runs, but um, if he gets to the front, he can prove very difficult to peg back. I'm going to be with number one over here, Shango. I was very impressed with his comeback run. You know, he won the dog. He ran second in the derby, if I'm not mistaken, over the 2450 on the stand side track. Yeah. I believe he, the stand side track is is where we see him at his best, and. Um, Comes into the race, second best weighted. Um, going to strip a lot fitter from that run. So I'm going to be with Shango. I think he does represent some value. That's 10 to 1, right? 
Yeah, but Claude, I mean, the race doesn't stop there. I mean, you've got Blackthorn, you've got Jamila, Razor, Hallelujah. They're all in good form. Yeah. Um, so I make, this, I make this a tricky event, but I do believe there is some value in Shango's current odds. All right, 10 Shango's 10 to 1. That could be the shrewdy guys, that one's the, the one to watch for in the ninth race, the final leg of today's XX. Yes, the information for you. Dot this down. Welcome back, everybody, to race number 10 on the card. Good to have you with us. And this is a handicap at the 105 level. It's run over the mile, this particular event, the 10th race on the card, where number nine, another level, is now 72 favourite. And seven, Thunder Belt, is trading at four to one. Those two, an interesting 1,600-metre race to end the day, Daryl. Yes, Clyde. I think I found some value for the viewers over here. Um, number eight, Sudden Star. Uh, last time out, I think, clearly, you can just put a line through that. Uh, the parachute went out. Um, Sudden star, eh? Yeah. Have a look at it. He's had three runs in the soft card. All three. He's come up trumps. Now he's got a two draw. Vanderbilt's going to go to the head of affairs. Yeah. I'm um, hoping a horse like Sudden Star could just slot in behind him, get a nice toe through the run of the race. I think he could possibly upset Clyde. I'm not saying. 16 to 1, eh? That's his I, price at the moment. He's not one you can rely on, but on his best form, if he's feeling good, I wouldn't be shocked to see him pull this off. Who's his danger? Vanderbilt, I mean, he's really done well on the stand side track. Yeah. Uh, I know you like to say this would be a jockey up, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. See, under Sasebo to reach a Ah, if it's fair, I think. Experience horses. Uh, then you've got a horse like Imperial Master. I mean, he may be in need of this outing, but he's two from two of the course and distance. He likes to be given a chance and come with a late run. Yeah. Uh, Felisande gets on well with him. 53 kilograms to shoulder, a nice one to include in your trifectas and quartets. But to end of the day in a tricky event, I'm going to say let's go each way with number eight, Sudden Star. Okay, interesting value about that uh, Sudden Star. It's going to be a super day here at the races, uh, the 10th and final. Those that are watching before, those that are watching currently, well, it's, let's hope it's 10th, the selections that you're going to see in a good while. I see the South African Army Foundation. There's a room behind us here, right in front of us. They take in this room. I know they do every year. And did you go to the Army? Did you enjoy the Army? Luckily, um, Luckily, I didn't go to so I did, I had to. You know who my commandant was? Etienne Lowe. Remember Etienne Lowe from the Bilt? He was my commandant. We were based here at Turfentine Racecourse. Our army, yeah, well, this was our home base <laughs> at, at, at the racecourse. We learned a lot. Okay, well, that's good. I hope all good. Uh, thank you very much for watching Waited to Win. Here's our 10th race uh, recommendations today. Thanks for joining and all of the support. Trust all as well.